According to preliminary results of the election held over three days from March 15 to 17, current Russian President Vladimir Putin was elected ahead of three other candidates with an overwhelming number of votes. President Vladimir Putin, Russia's Historical Choice, Part 1 The results of the 2024 election can be predicted because Vladimir Putin is not only the president but also the leader of the Russian people. After this term, if he is healthy enough and has other conditions, he can absolutely run for election in 2030 to lead the country until 2036. Let's find out why he is so highly trusted by Russians. Sincerely introduced to readers a series of articles by Colonel Lu the Mao, former head of Military Science Information Department, Institute of Defense Strategy. Vladimir Putin was voluntarily given the position of acting president by Russia's first president Boris Yeltsin on December 31, 1999. This is an unprecedented decision in the history of the Soviet Union as well as the history of Russia, in the context of the Russian Federation falling into a comprehensive economic, social, political, security crisis, and even standing still. At risk of disintegration. This crisis is a direct consequence of the reforms since the mid-1980s that led to the dissolution of the Soviet Union as well as the socialist system. Russia fell into a geopolitical disaster. Over the past 30 years since the collapse of the Soviet Union, there have been thousands of research projects on the causes leading to this geopolitical disaster, but in short, it is due to three core causes and direct consequences. Continuation of the reform in the 1980s Firstly, mistakes in the reform path of real socialism. Regarding this reason, Mr. Putin once commented that the collapse of the Soviet Union could be prevented if the right and effective reform path was found. Second, the process of self-evolution, degeneration, and metamorphosis of a large number of officials and party members of the Communist Party of the Soviet Union led to the betrayal of socialism by many senior leaders in the party, standing and led by Mikhail Gorbachev and Alexander Yakovlev. Third, according to declassified official U.S. doctrinal and strategic documents, Washington's strategy of peaceful evolution in the Cold War era aimed not only to disintegrate the Soviet Union, but also to wipe out the country. Russia is removed from the world map, regardless of whether it develops along a socialist or capitalist path. These three causes are closely related to each other. In particular, America's strategy of peaceful evolution against the Soviet Union was one of the very important reasons that led to the collapse of the Soviet Union. Immediately after the collapse of the Soviet Union, the leadership in Washington declared America the winner and Russia the loser in the Cold War. That's why the U.S. always forces Russia to accept Washington's arrangement in the unipolar world order after the Cold War and completely ignores Russia's legitimate interests as a sovereign country. The decisive period of America's victory in the strategy of peaceful evolution took place from the mid-1980s. During this period, the United States implemented two strategic projects, the Harvard Project and the Houston Project. The Harvard Project was carried out during the years when the Soviet Union carried out reforms to disintegrate the Soviet Communist Party and the Soviet Union. The Houston Project aims to disintegrate Russia into many areas under the control of the U.S. and its allies. Helping America effectively realize the Harvard Project were Western influence agents who once went underground and climbed to the highest leadership positions in the Soviet Communist Party. Therefore, the reform process in the Soviet Union coincided with one of the stages in the Harvard Project, which took place under the direction of Mikhail Gorbachev as General Secretary of the Communist Party of the Soviet Union with effective advisors. His name is Alexander Yakovlev, an American spy. After the collapse of the Soviet Union in 1991, Gorbachev and Yakovlev appeared as traitors to the Soviet Union. In 2001, in the introduction to the Black Book of Communism, Mr. Yakovlev admitted, the goal of reform is to eliminate the political system of the Soviet Communist Party and the Soviet state. Mikhail Gorbachev believes that by abandoning socialism and following the capitalist path, Russia will be integrated into Western civilization, along with capitalist countries such as Germany, France, Britain and Italy build a common European house. The first president of the Russian Federation, Boris Yeltsin, during his visit to the United States on June 17, 1992, gave a speech to the National Assembly of this country, 
officially declaring that Russia voluntarily abandoned communism and integrated. In the free world, the leader is America. With the policy of comprehensive cooperation with the West, President Yeltsin invited American economic, political, and security experts and advisors to Moscow to help Russia carry out a comprehensive reform program following the model of capitalism. Copy. With the help of American experts, led by Professor Jeffrey Sachs of Harvard University and a special advisor to Mr. Yeltsin, the Russian government carried out a comprehensive reform program called shock therapy to bring Russia's accelerated development and integration into the West. In it, the centrally planned economy was completely eliminated and transformed into an unlimited free market economy, abolished the Soviet political system to build new political institutions, erase the history of thousands of years of Russian civilization, including the history of the Soviet period. In addition, with the help of American legal advisors, the Constitution of the Russian Federation was drafted at breakneck speed in three months and took effect on December 25, 1993. Notably, the 1993 Constitution stripped Russia of its sovereignty. For example, there is no provision in the Russian Federation's constitution to inherit the status of the Soviet Union. Clause 4, Article 15 stipulates that international law should be placed above the Russian constitution. Clause 1, Article 62 stipulates that Russian citizens are allowed to have foreign citizenship. Taking advantage of this provision, a series of Russian government officials from central to local levels as well as in the Russian parliament have dual citizenship and can own personal property abroad. This is the Achilles heel in Russian politics that the US and Western countries try to take advantage of to implement sanctions against Russia. The savior appears. Relying on the United States to reform Russia was a strategic mistake of President Yeltsin bringing Russia into a comprehensive economic, social, political, and security crisis and facing the risk of disintegration. American Character In 1996, Mr. Yeltsin's reputation dropped to only 3%. On August 21, 1998, the Russian House of Representatives, with 248 votes in favor out of a total of 450 lawmakers, proposed that Boris Yeltsin resign. On May 15, 1999, the Russian State Duma held an impeachment meeting against Yeltsin, accusing him of being guilty of the events that led to the dissolution of the Soviet Union, caused the Chechen War, weakened the Russian army and caused catastrophic population decline. In that hot water context, in August 1999, President Boris Yeltsin decided to appoint Vladimir Putin, director of the Russian Federal Security Service, as Prime Minister of Russia officially bringing Mr. Putin onto the stage. Kremlin Politics Just four months later, on December 31, 1999, Mr. Yeltsin voluntarily gave the position of acting president of Russia to Vladimir Putin according to the provisions of the Constitution, with the hope that this man will save Russia from the risk of disintegration. However, this historic decision by Mr. Yeltsin also pursues another calculation. Vladimir Putin will ensure that he will not be impeached after retirement. As expected, the first document that acting President Vladimir Putin signed was the decree ensuring a safe retirement for Boris Yeltsin. Accordingly, Boris Yeltsin as well as all members of the nepotism apparatus a common term referring to figures close to the Russian government during Mr. Yeltsin's nearly two terms in power will not be punished prosecuted for causing a crisis that could lead to the dissolution of the Russian Federation, using the military contrary to the Russian constitution, corruption, bribery and embezzlement of public funds.